Published O24, Est, the 21st of November 2017, updated 1436, Est, the 21st of November 2017, deposed dictator Robert Mugabe could leave Zimbabwe as early as tonight after finally resigning the presidency after 37 years, but the military is demanding his hated wife be left behind to face prosecution, one of his Mugabe's protection team told Mail Online, from my understanding, he might leave the country tonight. The generals promised him he could leave safely. The generals were insisting that Grace must be prosecuted. It was a burning issue up until today. I don't know what the outcome was, but they were insisting that they might forgive the old man but not Grace. Grace could be arrested tonight, a close family member added, as wild scenes of celebration erupted around the country following news of the 93-year-old's departure. As politicians danced and sang in Parliament whites and blacks united in the streets as cars honked their horns, flags flew and lorries of revelers roared through the streets, Gucci Grace, as she is known thanks to her lavish spending sprees, prompted the dictator's downfall when she attempted to oust Vice President Emerson Nangagwa from power to clear the way for her own succession. Mr Nangagwa is now back in the country, having fled to South Africa earlier this month, as an UP minister said. He has urged followers to stay calm and thanked them for their hard work, the minister added. He is expected to be sworn into office on Wednesday or Thursday. Scroll down for video These were scenes of jubilation in Zimbabwe's parliament as the announcement was made this afternoon that Robert Mugabe had finally resigned after 37 years in power. Politicians broke out into applause and chanting at a joint sitting of parliament when Speaker Jacob Mudender announced Mugabe's resignation and suspended the impeachment procedure. There were scenes of celebration on the streets of Harare as the world's oldest head of state came caved into pressure and ended a near four decades grip on power defined by brutality and economic collapse members of the military, whose march in Harare last week singled the beginning of the end for Mugabe, as people celebrate upon hearing the news that he has resigned Robert Mugabe, 93, could leave Zimbabwe this evening after resigning as president after 37 years, but the military is demanding that reviled second wife Grace, 52 pictured together, is left behind to face prosecution Mugabe's death Deputy, Emerson Nangagwa Wright, who was ousted from power at Grace's request will now return to the country and assume power as soon as tomorrow, ZANU-PF officials said while Mugabe is still popular among Zimbabweans, the population had become increasingly concerned that his much-loathed wife Grace was preparing to take over. The announcement that he had resigned was met with wild celebrations. Harari erupted in wild celebrations this evening as dictator Robert Mugabe finally caved into pressure and stepped down. Celebrations continued long into the night in Harari as Mugabe finally loosed his grip on power after 37 years. Citizens wave flags and chant slogans in Harari after Robert Mugabe resigned as the country's president. Men hold a mock gravestone for General Chiwenga, one of Mugabe's many nicknames, as they celebrate in Harare the military has deployed extra troops onto the streets in an attempt to keep the peace amid carnival scenes there was little sign of trouble on Tuesday night, however, as members of the public cheered the army after Mugabe resigned elsewhere on Monday Constantino Chiwenga, the head of the country's army, called for restraint from all political parties Zimbabwe's former Prime Minister Morgan Changarai said it was time to define a new chapter for the country's ANUF's chief whip said Emerson Nangagwa will serve the rest of Mugabe's term until fresh elections scheduled for 2018. Theresa May praised Mugabe's departure and said Zimbabwe's oldest friend will support the transition. The U.S. Embassy called the resignation historic, saying it is an opportunity to set the nation on a new path. Mugabe and Grace are currently holed up at their Blue Roof mansion, according to a source who spoke to Mail Online, with Mugabe so depressed he can't even lift his feet. One of the former dictator's security team said he is depressed to the extent he is failing to walk. He is dragging his feet. Grace has been refusing to go outside into the open air all day as well, he said. They both know the end has come and they are deeply depressed. Their greatest worry is what is going to happen to them and their family, he added the issue of Grace was a burning one. 
the generals were going to press ahead with prosecuting her for crimes including money laundering, capturing of state assets and interfering with government business. It was Grace's decision to try and oust Nang Agua from power and clear a path for her own succession to the presidency that sparked the military uprising which ultimately toppled her husband. Mystery also remains over the fate of couple's two sons, Chatunga and Robert Jr., who live in South Africa. Chatunga has been updating social media regularly since the military began ousting his father from power, with the latest update coming on Monday in the form of a picture of himself checking his phone. Zimbabwe's former Prime Minister Morgan Changarai said this afternoon we need to sit down and redefine a new chapter. I Robert Gabriel Mugabe in terms of Section 96 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe hereby formally tender my resignation with immediate effect. My decision to resign is voluntary on my part. I have resigned to allow smooth transfer of power. Kindly give the public notice of my decision as soon as possible. The origin of Mugabe's sudden downfall lies in rivalry between members of Zimbabwe's ruling elite over who will succeed him. Rather than popular protests against his rule, Mugabe's resignation comes a week after the army and his former political allies moved against him, ending four decades of rule by a man who turned from independence hero to archetypal African strongman. The 93-year-old had clung on for a week after an army takeover and expulsion from his own ruling ZANUPF party, but resigned shortly after Parliament began an impeachment process seen as the only legal way to force him out. The U.S. Embassy in Zimbabwe has called the resignation historic, saying it is an opportunity for the nation to set itself on a new path to free and fair elections. British Prime Minister Theresa May said the resignation of Robert Mugabe provides Zimbabwe with an opportunity to forge a new path free of the oppression that characterized his rule. In recent days we have seen the desire of the Zimbabwean people for free and fair elections and the opportunity to rebuild the country's economy under a legitimate government. As Zimbabwe's oldest friend we will do all we can to support this, working with our international and regional partners to help the country achieve the brighter future it so deserves, British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson says Robert Mugabe was a despot who impoverished his country and his exit is a moment of joy for Zimbabwe. Johnson says he hopes Mugabe's resignation will be a turning point and that there should now be free and fair democratic elections and above all not a transition from one despotic rule to another. Wild celebrations broke out at a joint sitting of Parliament when Speaker Jacob Mudender announced Mugabe's resignation and suspended the impeachment procedure. In a highly symbolic scene, a man removed a portrait of Mugabe from a room inside the Parliament where MPs were gathering for an extraordinary session to impeach the recalcitrant president. Another bystander replaced it with an image of Mr. Nangagwa. People danced and car horns blared on the streets of Harare at news that the era of Mugabe who has led Zimbabwe since independence in 1980 was finally over. We are just so happy that things are finally going to change, Togo and the Lambi, 32, a hairdresser, told AFP, we woke up every morning waiting for this day. This country has been through tough times. After a week of political turmoil, Zimbabweans reacted with shock and unfettered joy. I am so happy that Mugabe is gone, 37 years under a dictatorship is not a joke, said Tanashe Chukunetsa, 18. Mugabe had been accused of allowing his wife Grace, 52, to usurp power and of being too old to rule Zimbabwe in SOLRS show where their allegiances lie as they fist pump revelers on the streets after Mugabe's resignation people removed the portrait of former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe after his resignation this afternoon this was the scene as Zimbabweans celebrated in Harare today after the resignation of President Robert Mugabe the origin of Mugabe's sudden downfall lies in rivalry between members of Zimbabwe's ruling elite over who will succeed him, rather than popular protests against his rule. Citizens took to the streets to celebrate the resignation today jubilation citizens jumped on cars and waved flags as they celebrated the departure of Robert Mugabe this afternoon a man jumps for joy as others celebrate on the streets of Harare following the historic resignation this afternoon one man jumped on a table in Zimbabwe's parliament building as Robert Mugabe's resignation letter was read out he am hoping for a new Zimbabwe ruled by the people and not by one person. 
We need leaders who are selected by the people and not rulers. I am looking forward to get a job after our economy recovers. Following the departure of Mugabe, Britain's Queen Elizabeth is now the oldest living head of state. The top eight are one. Queen Elizabeth II, United Kingdom age 912. Baji Kai this Ebse, Tunisia age 903. Sheikh Sabah Ibi Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah, Kuwait age 884. Raul Castro, Cuba, age 865. Paul Beer, Cameroon, age 846. Michel Aoun, Lebanon, age 847. Aki Hito, Emperor of Japan, age 838. King Salaman, Saudi Arabia, age 81. Massive crowds gathered within minutes of the shock announcement to Parliament. Men were breakdancing, women were singing and children were in tears, all brandishing national flags and praising General Constantino Chi Wenga, the man who led the army takeover as the news began to sink in. It's shocking. That guy is powerful, very powerful, said Barbara Wright Karambi, one of those who joined the euphoric street celebrations. One boisterous group of women burst into an exclusive Harari hotel, snatched a portrait of Mr. Mugabe and smashed it outside. The women fought off security officers who tried to stop them vandalizing the premises before stealing the picture and breaking it to smithereens. They then danced on the picture before a shirtless man broke it across his knee and ran away into the traffic. It expressed how Zimbabweans feel now that Mugabe's 37-year reign of terror has finally ended. Some people held posters of Zimbabwean Army Chief General Constantino Chiwenga and former Vice President Emerson Nangagwa, whose sacking this month triggered the military takeover that forced Mugabe to resign. Mugabe is the only leader Zimbabwe has known since a guerrilla struggle ended white minority rule in the former Rhodesia. Robert Mugabe's rap sheet was published this afternoon by the Parliament of Zimbabwe. His charges were fourfold serious misconduct failure to obey, uphold or defend the constitution willful violation of this constitution and an inability to perform the functions of office because of physical or mental incapacity. With regard to the serious misconduct, Mugabe is accused of eight different counts. Six of the eight counts relate to his wife, known as Gucci Grace, while the other two relate to corruption and the harboring of fugitives. Mugabe is accused of allowing his wife to assume his constitutional mandate, access classified and privileged documents, abuse state resources, insulting the new leader Vice President Nangagwa and threatening to kill him. He is also said to have let Grace Mugabe cause disaffection within the country's defense forces by spreading reckless and false allegations against the army. His alleged failure regarding the constitution surrounds a controversial Zimbabwean politician Professor Jonathan Moyo. Mugabe is accused of unlawfully protecting him. The 93-year-old's inability to perform his duties is spelled out in the charge sheet under two clauses. He is accused of not being able to stand up without his wife or an aide holding his hand due to his old age. Mugabe also slept through important deliberations in cabinet meetings, the rap sheet claims. These were all going to be used to oust the long-standing dictator from his position, but he stunned the world by standing down this afternoon. Mugabe had been widely expected to resign on Sunday during a speech in Harare. But aired by a cabal of general who have been holding him under house arrest, he instead went off script and vowed to stay on. Citizens are pictured celebrating today the streets of Zimbabwe's capital have erupted in dancing, singing, honking and cheers after President Robert Mugabe announced his immediate resignation after 37 years in power car horns blared and cheering crowds raced through the streets of the Zimbabwean capital Harare as news spread that President Robert Mugabe had resigned after 37 years in power the resignation announcement came after days of building pressure on the 93-year-old authoritarian leader who was feared by many of his citizens through his long and often repressive rule November 6 after a campaign of public insults against Vice President Emerson Nangagwa, Mugabe fires his longtime deputy, later accusing him of plotting to take power via witchcraft. Nangagwa flees the country. November 13 Army Commander Constantino Chiwenga issues a rare public rebuke, saying the military won't hesitate to step in to calm political tensions and criticizing the handling of the once prosperous southern African nation's crumbling economy. 
November 14 – Armored personnel carriers are seen on the outskirts of the capital, Harare. The military moves in overnight, taking control of the state-run broadcaster. November 15 – The military announces that Mugabe is under house arrest and an operation has begun to arrest criminals around him who harmed the economy. Unpopular First Lady Grace Mugabe, who many feared would replace Nyingagwa and even succeed her husband, disappears from view. November 16 – State-run media publish extraordinary photos of a smiling Mugabe shaking hands with the army commander at the State House amid negotiations on the president's exit as the military tries to avoid accusations of a coup. November 17 – The army, which continues to refer to Mugabe as president, allows him to make his first public appearance since house arrest. He appears at a graduation ceremony to polite applause. November 18 – The bulk of the capital's roughly 1.6 million people pour into the streets in an anti-Mugabe demonstration that even days ago would have brought a police crackdown. November 19 – The ruling party Central Committee expels Mugabe as party leader and tells him to step aside or face impeachment. In a speech on national television, he does not announce his resignation as expected. November 20 – The ruling party's Central Committee says it will begin impeachment proceedings. The military says Mugabe and Nyingagwa have made contact and the fire deputy will return to Zimbabwe shortly. November 21 – Nyingagwa calls on Mugabe to heed the will of Zimbabwe's people and resign immediately. The ruling party begins impeachment proceedings, which are halted so Mugabe's resignation letter can be read to jizz. During his reign, he took the once a country to economic ruin and kept his grip on power through repression of opponents, although he styled himself as the grand man of African politics and kept the admiration of many people across Africa. The army seized power after Mugabe sacked Nyingagwa, ZANUPF's favorite to succeed him, to smooth the path to the presidency for his wife Grace, 52, known to her critics as Gucci Grace for her reputed fondness for luxury shopping. But Mugabe refused to resign, prompting the impeachment procedure which would have been the only legal was to force him out. Nyingagwa is a former security chief known as the Crocodile, he was a key lieutenant to Mugabe for decades and stands accused of participating in repression against Zimbabweans who challenged the leader. Reuters reported in September that Nyingagwa was plotting to succeed Mugabe, with army backing, at the helm of a broad coalition. The plot posited an interim, unity government with international blessing to allow for Zimbabwe's re-engagement with the world after decades of isolation from global lenders and donors. Mugabe led Zimbabwe's liberation war and is hailed as one of post-colonial Africa's founding fathers and a staunch supporter of the drive to free neighboring South Africa from apartheid in 1994, but many say he has damaged Zimbabwe's economy, democracy and judiciary by staying in power for too long and has used violence to crush perceived political opponents. The country faces a foreign exchange payments crisis and roaring inflation. Since the crisis began, Mugabe has been mainly confined to his Blue Roof mansion in the capital where Grace is also believed to be. In his resignation letter today, Mugabe wrote I Robert Gabriel Mugabe in terms of Section 96 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe hereby formally tender my resignation with immediate effect. My decision to resign is voluntary on my part, I have resigned to allow smooth transfer of power, kindly give the public notice of my decision as soon as possible. It comes as it emerged that the despot has been left isolated and humiliated after his demands for ministers to attend his weekly cabinet meeting were dismissed. Earlier, Angolan President João Lourenço said he and South African President Jacob Zuma would fly to Zimbabwe on Wednesday following talks between regional leaders on the crisis engulfing the country. South African President Jacob Zuma and I have agreed to visit Harare tomorrow, Angolan President João Lourenço told journalists Tuesday after a meeting of the Southern African Regional Bloc in Luanda. The two leaders will represent the 15-nation Southern African Development Community SADC Bloc of which their countries are the leading members. SADC has sought to broker an end to the instability triggered when Zimbabwe's army took over the country after T. Mugabe sacked his vice president and cleared the way for his wife Grace. 
To succeed him, the crisis summit noted with great concern the unfolding political situation in Zimbabwe, SADC said in a statement. Earlier Zanuf's secretary, Simon Kaya, told reporters that Mr. Mugabe had been formally notified of the party's decision to impeach him. At the University of Zimbabwe on Monday, students protested and refused to sit for exams, singing and demanding that Mugabe step down. The spokesman for the Zimbabwe National Students' Union, Zivui Mhetu, said they want all universities shut down until he does protest. A man holding a flag of Zimbabwe takes part in a demonstration of University of Zimbabwe's students yesterday morning. Zimbabwe and President Robert Mugabe, 93, who resigned on Tuesday, has a long history of making colorful or controversial remarks during a reign that has spanned nearly four decades. Among them on staying in office some are saying Mr. Mugabe is old, so he should step down. No, when my time comes, I will tell you. 2014, only God who appointed me will remove me not the MDC opposition, not the British. 2008 on coming to power Mugabe's speech when Zimbabwe won independence was more conciliatory. It could never be a correct justification that because the whites oppressed us yesterday when they had power, the blacks must oppress them today. 1980 on seizing farms you are now our enemies because you really have behaved as enemies of Zimbabwe. We are of anger. Our entire community is angry and that is why we now have the war veterans seizing land. 2000 on Britain, former colonial ruler the British were brought up as a violent people, liars, scoundrels and crooks. I am told that former British Prime Minister Tony Blair was a troublesome little boy at school. 2001 on gay people worse than pigs and dogs. Those who do it, we will say, they are wayward. It is just madness, insanity. 2010 on gay marriage President Barack Obama came to Africa saying Africa must allow gay marriages. God destroyed the earth because of these sins. Weddings are for a man and a woman. 2013 on Nelson Mandela Mandela has gone a bit too far in doing good to the non-black communities, really in some cases at the expense of blacks. That's being too saintly, too good. 2013 on Hitler I am still the Hitler of the time. This Hitler has only one objective, justice for his own people, sovereignty for his people, recognition of the independence of his people. If that is Hitler, then let me be a Hitler tenfold. 2003 on his affair before his first wife D in 1992, Mugabe started a relationship with Grace, whom he married in 1996, I wanted children and this is how I thought I could get them. I knew what I was doing and my wife knew. 1998 on colonialism African resources belong to Africa. Others may come to assist as our friends and allies, but no longer as colonizers or oppressors, no longer as racists. 2015 on death false reports of Mugabe dying were a feature of his old age. I have D many times. That's where I have beaten Christ. Christ D once and resurrected once. I have D and resurrected and I don't know how many times I will and resurrect. 2012 on resigning my decision to resign is voluntary on my part. It arises from my concern for the welfare of the people of Zimbabwe and my desire to ensure a smooth, peaceful and non-violent transfer of power that underpins national security, peace and stability, he says in a resignation letter on November 21, 2017. Down with the dictator how Mugabe's tyrannical 37-year rule came to an end after a lifetime of defiance B. Gareth Davies The writing had been on the wall for the dictator who has ruled over Zimbabwe for 37 years after a shock coup was orchestrated by the vice president he sacked last week. A week of chaos and uncertainty followed the news last Tuesday that Robert Mugabe was under house arrest in his sprawling mansion leaving the country's governance in turmoil. His former vice president, Emerson the Crocodile Nangagwa, had been the figurehead of the takeover which seemed to be heading to a neat conclusion with a live TV resignation by Mugabe yesterday. Robert Gabriel Mugabe was born on February 21, 1924 at a Catholic mission village near southern Rhodesia's capital city, Salisbury. 
pictured Mugabe with Nang Agwa and Josiah Tong Argera, a guerrilla commander when he was ten. His father walked out on the family, and in his absence an Irish Catholic who praised opponents of the British Empire of which Mugabe was a subject became a major influence on his life later in his rule. He used blistering rhetoric to blame his country's downward spiral on Western sanctions, though they were targeted personally at Mugabe and his henchmen rather than at Zimbabwe's economy. Pictured left Mugabe with his old hero Fidel Castro in 2005. Right with his old queen, Elizabeth II, in 2008 first heralded as a liberator who rid the former British colony Rhodesia of white minority rule. Robert Gabriel Mugabe was soon cast in the role of a despot who crushed political dissent and ruined the national economy. Pictured Mugabe meeting with North Korea's Kim Il-sung in 1993 Old Dictators Club President Mugabe embraces Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi at the inauguration ceremony of South African President Jacob Zuma on May 9, 2009 in Pretoria, South Africa Mugabe was described as a loner, and a studious child known to carry a book even while tending cattle in the bush. Pictured Mugabe during his marriage to second wife Grace Britain's former Foreign Secretary Peter Carrington knew Mugabe well, having mediated the Lancaster House talks that paved the way for Zimbabwe's independence. He told his biographer that Mugabe wasn't human at all, adding there was a sort of reptilian quality about him. Pictured the president with Tony Blair in 1997 Mugabe repeatedly called for violence against white people in Rhodesia during the War of Independence, lashing out at them in racist rants as being blood-sucking exploiters and sadistic killers. Pictured right a victim of the seizure of white farms overseen by Mugabe's regime decades after he came to power. Left two men standing by the, the gates of a farm which they seized from white farmers in 2009 he qualified as a teacher at the age of 17, later studying at Fort Hare University in South Africa pictured, where he met many of Southern Africa's future black nationalist leaders unexpectedly, the stubborn leader dug his claws in and instead delivered a rambling 20-minute speech to say he was staying on as the country's president. Behind the scenes, the Parliament of Zimbabwe prepared impeachment charges against Mugabe ready to forcibly oust him as leader. He qualified as a teacher at 17, later studying at Fort Hare University in South Africa, where he met many of Southern Africa's future black nationalist leaders. Pictured Mugabe with his first wife, Sally, at Buckingham Palace in 1982 but Mugabe shocked the world for the second time in two days by standing down in a letter read out by the Speaker of the Parliament which sparked jubilation in the streets of Hirari. But how did the world's oldest dictator come to hold so much power for so long and what influenced him to become the infamous tyrant of his later years? Robert Gabriel Mugabe was born on February 21, 1924 at a Catholic mission village near southern Rhodesia's capital city, Salisbury. His father, Gabriel Mati Biri, was a carpenter and his mother, Bona, was a religious teacher. Raised by Jesuits, the young Mugabe was instilled with an austere sense of self-discipline from the beginning of his life. When he was ten, his father walked out on the family, and in his absence an Irish Catholic who praised opponents of the British Empire of which Mugabe was a subject became a major influence on his life. Father Jerome O'Hare also preached a philosophy of racial equality as well teaching him about the Irish War of Independence and how revolutionaries had seized their country back from the British. Father Oweya doted on Mugabe, telling his mother that one day he would be an important somebody and a leader. His mother is said to have believed Father O.A. had brought that prophecy from God, putting his needs above his five siblings. Before he died in 1970, Father O.A. said his former pupil had an exceptional mind and an exceptional heart. Mugabe was described as a loner, and a studious child known to carry a book even while tending cattle in the bush. After his time at the mission, he trained as a teacher with his tuition fees paid for partly by Father O.A. Mugabe qualified as a teacher at the age of 17, later studying at Fort Hare University in South Africa, where he met many of Southern Africa's future black nationalist leaders. Pictured Mugabe with Margaret Thatcher in 1988 he ultimately embraced Marxist doctrine, but claimed that his biggest influence was Mohandas Gandhi because of his behavior during the Indian struggle for independence. 
pictured Mugabe in 1979, a year before he became Prime Minister first heralded as a liberator who rid the former British colony Rhodesia of white minority rule. Mugabe pictured above with Nelson Mandela was soon cast in the role of a despot who crushed political dissent and ruined the national economy during the war against white rule. He made frequent radio speeches during which he praised communist revolutionaries, including Vladimir Lenin, Fidel Castro and mass murderers Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong. Pictured Mugabe with New Zealand PM David Long in 1985-1980 Mugabe named Prime Minister after independence elections 1982 Military action begins in Metaboliland against perceived uprising Government is accused of killing thousands of civilians 1987 Mugabe changes constitution and becomes president 1994 Mugabe receives honorary British knighthood 2000 Land seizures of white-owned farms begin Western donors cut off aid 2000 5 United States calls Zimbabwe an outpost of tyranny 2008 Mugabe and opposition candidate Morgan Svanger A. agree to share power after contested election Britain's Queen Elizabeth II annuls Mugabe's honorary knighthood 2011 Prime Minister Svanger A. declares power sharing a failure amid violence 2013 Mugabe wins seventh term opposition alleges election fraud 2016 this flag protest movement emerges independence war veterans turn on Mugabe Mugabe, calling him dictatorial 2017 Mugabe begins campaigning for 2018 election snov. 6 Mugabe fires Deputy Emerson Nangagwa, appearing to position First Lady Grace Mugabe for Vice President Postnov. 15 Army announces it has Mugabe and his wife in custody as military appears to take control. He qualified as a teacher at the age of 17, later studying at Fort Hare University in South Africa, where he met many of Southern Africa's future black nationalist leaders. It was during this period that Mugabe was introduced to Marxism by South African communists. He later embraced Marxist doctrine, but claimed that his biggest influence was Mohandas Gandhi because of his behavior during the Indian struggle for independence. When he returned to southern Rhodesia in 1952, he was completely hostile to European imperialism. He headed to Ghana to teach in 1958, where he was influenced by President Kwame Nkrumah. Mugabe said he went to the country as an adventurist because he wanted to see what an independent African state looked like. Ghana was the first nation in the continent to win freedom from a European power. While there, he attended the Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute in Winneboro and later claimed that it was while he was in Ghana that Y embraced Marxism. Mugabe returned to his homeland and was detained for his nationalist activities in 1964 before spending the next 10 years in prison camps or jails. During his incarceration, he gained three degrees through correspondence but the years in prison left their mark. His four-year-old son by his first wife Garnet and born Sally Francesca Hayfron, d. while he was behind bars. Rhodesian leader Ian Smith denied him leave to attend the funeral. During the struggle against white rule, Mugabe was famous as a propagandist. He made frequent radio speeches during which he praised communist revolutionaries, including Vladimir Lenin, Fidel Castro and mass murderers Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong. Mugabe also repeatedly called for violence against white people in Rhodesia, lashing out at them in racist rants as being blood-sucking exploiters and sadistic killers. He headed to Ghana to teach in 1958, where he was influenced by President Kwame Nkrumah. Mugabe said he went to the country as an adventurist because he wanted to see what an independent African state looked like. Ghana was the first nation in the continent to win freedom from a European power. Pictured Mugabe with British Foreign Secretary David Owen during his incarceration, he gained three degrees through correspondence but the years in prison left their mark. His four-year-old son by his first wife Garnet and born Sally Francesca Hayfron, d. while he was behind bars. Rhodesian leader Ian Smith left denied him leave to attend the funeral.
Right, his one-time ally Joshua Nkomo. Nkomo was dismissed from government, where he held the home affairs portfolio, after the discovery of an arms cache in his Matabaliland province stronghold in 1982. Mugabe and Joshua Nkomo, leaders of the Zimbabwe Patriotic Front, hold a conference in London with British politicians to discuss the future of the independent state of Zimbabwe in the final decades of his rule. Mugabe, one of the world's most recognizable leaders with his thin stripe of moustache and thick-rimmed spectacles had embraced his new role as the antagonist of the West. Pictured Mugabe being made president by the country's former president, Kanan Banana in one particularly racist speech, he said, Let us hammer the white man to defeat. Let us blow up his citadel. Let us give him no time to rest. Let us chase him in every corner. Let us rid our home of this settler vermin. When the war was won, the country freed and renamed Zimbabwe. Mugabe swept to power in 1980 elections. A violent insurgency and economic sanctions had forced the Rhodesian government to the negotiating table. In office he initially won international plaudits for his declared policy of racial reconciliation and for extending improved education and health services to the black majority. But his luster faded quickly. Mugabe took control of one wing in the guerrilla war for independence the Zimbabwe African National Union ZANU and its armed forces after his release from prison in 1974, his partner in the armed struggle the leader of the Zimbabwe African People's Union ZAPU. Joshua Nkomo was one of the early casualties of Mugabe's crackdown on dissent. Nkomo was dismissed from government, where he held the home affairs portfolio, after the discovery of an arms cache in his Matabaliland province stronghold in 1982. Mugabe, whose party drew most of its support from the ethnic Shona majority, then unleashed his North Korean-trained 5th Brigade on Gumozin Dabela people in a campaign known as Gukurayundi that killed an estimated 20,000 suspected dissidents. It was the seizure of white-owned farms nearly two decades later that would complete Mugabe's transformation from darling of the West into international pariah though his status as a liberation hero still resonates in many parts of Africa. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe with his son Robert Jr. He can also be seen smiling at his grandson during his 93rd birthday celebrations. Mugabe cuts his birthday cake with his children, including Chatunga Mugabe II left and Bona Mugabe Center as well as his wife Grace Mugabe II right during his 89th birthday. President Mugabe with Queen Elizabeth LL and Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, at Buckingham Palace during his state visit to Britain in May 1994. Princess Diana is pictured meeting President Robert Mugabe during a British royal visit to Zimbabwe in 1993 aimed largely at placating angry war veterans who threatened to destabilize his rule. The land reform policy wrecked the crucial agricultural sector, caused foreign investors to flee and helped plunge the country into economic misery. At the same time, critics say, Mugabe clung to power through increased repression of human rights and by rigging elections. Mugabe had two sons and a daughter by second wife Grace. The First Lady has been viewed as a front-runner to succeed her husband after decades of his vice-like grip on power. His real obsession was not with personal wealth but with power, said biographer Martin Meredith. Year after year Mugabe sustained his rule through violence and repression crushing political opponents, violating the courts, trampling on property rights, suppressing the independent press and rigging elections. Mugabe once quipped that he'd rule his country until he turned 100, but, aged 93, his grip on power seems to be ebbing as tensions erupt between his loyal ZANUPF party and the military that has helped keep him in office. Zimbabweans sitting in front of Salaburi prison in 1968 after the triple hanging of James Delamini, Victor Milambo and Julie Shadrach, was ordered by Ian Smith's government despite Queen Elizabeth II issuing a royal reprieve. Mugabe spent time there during his opposition to white rule first heralded as a liberator who rid the former British colony Rhodesia of white minority rule. Mugabe was soon cast in the role of a despot who crushed political dissent and ruined the national economy. He was a great leader whose leadership degenerated to a level where he really brought Zimbabwe to its knees, said University of South Africa professor Shadrach Gutto. 
Britain's former Foreign Secretary Peter Carrington knew Mugabe well, having mediated the Lancaster House talks that paved the way for Zimbabwe's independence. Mugabe wasn't human at all, Carrington told biographer Heidi Holland. There was a sort of reptilian quality about him. You could admire his skills and intellect, but he was an away slippery sort of person. In the final decades of his rule, Mugabe one of the world's most recognizable leaders with his thin stripe of moustache and thick-rimmed spectacles has embraced his new role as the antagonist of the West. He used blistering rhetoric to blame his country's downward spiral on Western sanctions, though they were targeted personally at Mugabe and his henchmen rather than at Zimbabwe's economy. If people say you're a dictator, you know they are saying this merely to tarnish and demean your status, then you don't pay much attention, he said in a 2013 documentary. After decades in which the subject of succession was virtually taboo, a vicious struggle to take over after his death became apparent among the party elite as he reached his 90s and became visibly frail. He had been rumored for years to have prostate cancer, but according to the official account, his frequent trips to Singapore were related to his treatment for cataracts. Mugabe's second wife Grace his former secretary, who is 41 years his junior and has been seen as a potential successor boasted that even in his 80s he would rise before dawn to work out. It's true I was dead. I resurrected as I always do once I get back to my country. I am real again, he joked in 2016 after returning from a foreign trip, mocking rumors that he had d. But in his later years, he has stumbled and fallen more than once and delivered the wrong speech at the opening of Parliament last year. After Mugabe won the election of 1980 and became Zimbabwe's first prime minister, there were fears a potential takeover of the country by the Indabela ethnic minority may be afoot. In 1983, Nangagwa led a major crackdown in Matabeliland, in the southwest of Zimbabwe. Matabeliland was the stronghold of Mugabe's political rival, Joshua Nkomo. Mugabe blamed members of Gamo's party for a series of murders and attacks on property in the country. During the operation between 1983 and 87 later known as the Gukarayundia the early rain which washes away the before the spring rains tens of thousands of civilians were killed, the agreement between North Korea and Mugabe for the training of the 5th Brigade was signed in October 1980, when the Zimbabwean Prime Minister met with Kim Il-sung pictured the 5th Brigade in 1982 at Independence Day celebrations in Salisbury. The banner overhead read Let us lay down our lives for CDE. R.G. Muggerhead North Korean trained 5th Brigade was responsible for the atrocities, which also included the torture and rape of tens of thousands of in Metaboliland. Showing that they had learned from their communist teachers, the 5th Brigade troops summarily detained and executed and Debella men of fighting age, who were automatically deemed guilty of subversion. Many were also marched to re-education camps, a popular tactic employed by Stalinist North Korea as well as communist China. On one occasion, in March of 1983, the 5th Brigade slaughtered 55 people apparently at random on the banks of the Swale River. The SOLRS reportedly forced their victims to dig their own graves before being shot. The agreement between North Korea and Mugabe for the training of the 5th Brigade was signed in October 1980, when the Zimbabwean Prime Minister met with Kim Il-sung. The North Korean trained 5th Brigade picture training in 1984 was responsible for the atrocities, which also included the torture and rape of tens of thousands of in Metabiland. Over a hundred North Koreans arrived a year later to train the elite troops. But by 1988, the reputation of the brigade whose SOLRS were identifiable by their distinctive red berets was deemed so toxic that it was disbanded. None of the perpetrators of the atrocities has ever been brought to justice with those implicated including Mugabe and Nangagwa. Nangagwa was mentioned by, among others, the tycoon Roland Roland at the time of the massacres. He wrote to the U.S. ambassador that Nangagwa, as security minister, was why aware of the slaughter going on in the country's south.